in this narration that our philosophy on society is a bit more enlightened in my opinion. It's not just based on this irrational, in some cases, doctrine of individualism. Rather, it sees society and the individual as a collective whole and as individual parts, and they have symbiotic relationships and other dynamic links. That's the first point. The second point is that Islam, in contrast to a liberal worldview or a Western philosophical worldview, doesn't say we're not going to have a conception of the good life. Because we know in American and British society, from a political theory point of view, you don't have a conception of the good life. Charles Taylor, what does he say? You just don't say what's good. You allow a marketplace of competing values. And the most influential ones will come out best and they would win, regardless if they're right or wrong. But Islam takes a braver stance and says, no, we need to propagate cohesive values. Values like justice, compassion, mercy, distribution. And not only must these values be discussed, they must be socialized and politicized. And this is how it's done. One, via Islamic law. Sharia law provides mechanisms to ensure cohesive behavior. Two, communications and media. The Friday sermon. The teacher, the khatib, as he is called in Arabic, teaches people about these cohesive values. Radio, posters, billboards, media outlets. For example, if you go to London in the UK, on the tube, which is like the metro, the subway, what happens? You see certain signs and it says, please give up your seat to the elderly or pregnant women. That's quite cohesive, right? But why do they have to mention it? No one questions why do they mention it in the first place. Because I think it's because we have an individualistic, individualistic culture. But if we were socialized and it was embedded in us that this is an automatic thing to do, it's a social obligation, rather than individual right or individual freedom to choose to allow an old lady to sit down, then maybe that would be a more positive way forward. And that's an interesting practical example just to show how individualism even affects uh, our social norms. The other aspect is politics. Islamic leadership at all levels would promote cohesiveness. Also, the collective conscious of society would be embedded with these types of cohesive values. The next model, the next layer, I will call it a layer, the next layer of the Islamic model is that it provides mechanisms to prevent crime and fragmentation in the beginning. Because in a liberal society, what is it? America, Britain is generally free. I can do anything I want, as long as it's within the boundaries of the law. But generally the premise is freedom. I'm not saying we reject freedom, but I'm saying we have a perspective or we view it from the lens of accountability and responsibility. Rather than, I'm free to do this. What's up, yo? Yeah, as you might hear downtown LA. <laughs> You've never been there before? <laughs> I've heard about you guys in Irvine. Man. Yeah, even a bubble. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, so the point is, is that there's mechanism in Islamic society to prevent things happening, rather than just allowing it to be free. For example, the psychologist and criminologist Clive Hollin, he argues that crimes are the end result of criminals seizing the opportunity to make a personal or usually financial gain. So why don't we see the facilitating factors for crime? Because what do we do in Britain especially? We say, there's a problem, we need more legislation. But why don't we talk about the underlying values of society? Maybe there's a problem, maybe we just have to reevaluate what we believe to be true, or our perspective on man, life, and the whole universe. Do you see the point? So that's why Islam provides these mechanisms. One of these mechanisms is an amazing economic model. Because it allows people to have wealth, rather than a few have wealth and many not to have wealth. More practically, what Islam does, it doesn't over-agitate the instincts. If we read feminist philosophy, and I believe feminist philosophy has progressed in the last 20 years. It's actually an amazing philosophy. Many of it is in line with Islamic thinking. And they go away from the individualistic doctrine of society. It looks at it more with a dynamic relationship. And it complains and says, why when we sell dog food, for example, there's a naked woman? Does that make sense to you? I mean, as women, does that make sense? You have a naked woman to sell dog food? I mean, where's the relationship? Where's the link? It agitates. It's using the procreation instinct or the survival instinct to agitate us. For example, you. Who you are is what you wear, or your image. A very, very image-based culture. 
So if you don't have the Nike trainers, the Nike trainers, you don't have the clothes, you don't have the gold, you don't have the bling bling, then you're not a good guy. So what do you do? In order to find myself, I need to steal. I need to I be agitated to ensure that I happiness is the accumulation of wealth. And this is the fallacy. Islam actually deals it in a more unique way by stabilizing the agitation of instincts and giving them the middle path. The last point, and most controversially, is that the Islamic model, social model, has a workable justice system with higher burdens of proof and suitably harsh punishments. This is the controversy. The Islamic model has a workable justice system with high burdens of proof and suitably harsh punishments. Now, what's the caricature on Fox News? Who watches Fox News? <laughs> You're sad, man. <laughs> That's sad. Anyway, say Fox News, CNN, whatever the case may be, they paint a caricature of Sharia law, of Islamic law, the Islamic model. And what is the caricature? You have a lady with a hijab, with a head covering, and with that cloak, yeah? Batman stuff. <laughs> and inside she has a sword. Yeah? It's a sword. It's an Islamic version of an AK-47. Yeah? You have a sword. And next to the market or the shop or whatever you call it, yeah, you have a guy with a big beard up to his navel. And there's a poor dude from LA downtown. He's hungry.